duty, honor, country dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. The destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. Now, we are the masters of our fate. Howdy, gents. Welcome back to another episode of the Wolf and Iron Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Yarbrough, founder and curator of wolfandiron.com, and I'm glad you're here. Men, if you're joining us for the first time, let me just say welcome to you. Thank you so much for tuning into the Wolf and Iron Podcast. I think you're going to experience something unique here. Wolf and Iron was created to help men heed the high call on their lives. And what that means is kind of like this, guys. Every, every one of us men feels that there's something greater that we're called to that we just don't see examples of. And maybe purposefully by the media, there's an active battle against what it means to be a man in the traditional sense and the truest sense in our culture today. And Wolf and Iron is designed to counter that and to build you up, to help you become the best man that you can be, to heed that high call that you feel is on your heart, is on your life, the, the kind of man we really need in society. Okay, so I'm really excited about this episode. I get a chance to talk to my friend Raymond Johnston, and he's one of my favorite guys right now because he's the, the guy who's doing all the social media marketing for Rustic and Maine, which is my other business, aside from Wolf and Iron. He also helps out with some of the Wolf and Iron stuff, which is just kind of still growing. But Rustic and Maine has just taken off like crazy, and it's just been a, and a wonderful experience for me to see how marketing works, just the power of Facebook ads and, uh, and just really get the, getting my mind around how to market things in general. You know, my wife and I, we actually come from very different uh, kind of backgrounds. Her family actually grew up with the jewelry stores and sort of had that sort of face-to-face kind of encounter. I don't even actually consider what we do jewelry. We, we make these awesome handmade wooden rings out of historic woods and other, other unique materials. They just have a lot of meaning behind them. I never think about it as a jewelry store, and maybe that's helpful for me. But the the online market and the ability to market these products to to people and to do that with other things too, with the Wolf and Iron store, which is just kind of coming about and kind of coming into its own, is just fascinating, guys. And I really wanted to share these these kinds of things with you guys. But we go into more than that. You know, anytime you find somebody who really, really knows their craft very well, what you usually find is someone who has just a a good handle on a lot of areas in life. And Raymond's that guy. There are a lot of things he just gets really well. And uh, I think we go over a little bit more of our story about how we got connected and that kind of stuff in the podcast. I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. But it's just one of those things you can pick up on. When somebody's just sharp, they get it, right? And he talks, we, we even get into like, what's his morning routine? You know, we talk about success. We talk about the things that are working in terms of just general success, not just Facebook marketing, but just what are, what are the things that are, that are always going to help a business stand out and be successful? So I know you guys are going to get so much from this. And I don't want to delay this anymore. I'm really excited. Here's my friend, Raymond Johnston. Well, my friend, Raymond Johnston, I'm so glad to have you on the Wolf and Iron podcast. Thanks for being here, man. Hey, thanks, Mike. Love the podcast. Also love the Facebook group and the, how it's growing. It's really cool to see yeah, thanks, man. And, and that's right. You are a member of the Facebook group. And so, guys, if, uh, if you guys are in the part of our Wolf and Iron community, our online, free online Facebook group, you guys can head over there. And if you're not, it's wolfandiron.com forward slash the group. And you can either, if you're a member already, they'll take you right to the page. If you're not, it'll, it'll prompt you to answer some questions and, and things like that to become a member. But Raymond's in the, in the group as well. And so he, he definitely is, uh, is on there. You guys can look him up and know who I'm talking about, see a picture, all that kind of stuff, connect with him. Um, well, you know, I, I really appreciate you being here. And I'll tell you, you're, you're actually like one of my family's favorite guys right now because oh, that's you're, thanks. <laughs> you're helping my company make a lot of money and uh, that makes us happy, but you're also just a lot of fun to talk to. So my wife really, she looks forward actually to our conversations because she's, she, I don't know, you guys connect really well. You do a really good job just, you know, kind of speaking her language, especially when it comes to the social marketing and all that kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about today. But um, you know, we really appreciate you, man, and, uh, and it's been just a pleasure working with you. Thanks, Mike. I love working with you and Summer, too. I wish we could have phone calls more often just to sit and chat, but I get with you guys moving and also your business growing. 
sometimes not always uh, really time effective. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm such a down to business kind of guy. You know, summer's like wanting to talk about, you know, oh, we you know we're going to decorate like this and we're going to put up these things. And that's fantastic. She loves people. Uh, I like people. <laughs> but I'm always like, okay, we got to move on. We got other stuff to do. But no, it's, you're absolutely right. Um, well, you know, we're going to be talking about social media marketing. We're going to be talking about your expertise. I want the guys, if you're listening to this, I want you guys to be inspired by this conversation because there's absolutely this new market out there that you guys are probably not real familiar with. Some of you are entrepreneurs and these things are really going to resonate with you. For some of you, this is going to be brand new kind of information. And uh, so I really want this 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 con- this conversation that Raymond and I are having to really just inspire you to take risk in this new market, but also just have some understanding of how it all works. And, um, and I think once you begin to kind of see, we kind of peel away some of the layers, you get to see behind the scenes kind of things with, uh, with how the marketing works and how businesses are doing business these days. Um, you're going to be inspired to take action. Uh, but you know, even though we're talking about all this social media stuff, you and I met in a very, well, through social media, but it was a very organic way, right? I mean, you, yeah, it was. you saw like, you saw me wearing a t-shirt or something like that. How'd this work? Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually, so one of our clients, uh, an amazing backstory, just a really cool story. Maybe we can get into it one time, but, uh, so they sell apparel and I saw that you posted, cause I actually, I followed Rustic in Maine for quite a while. Cause I thought you guys made really cool, uh, products and I just love the style, loved your story. And I saw one day that you posted, uh, you wearing one of their t-shirts. They think it was on rustic and Maine and even on the Wolf and iron Instagram account too. Yeah. And you were saying how much you liked it, how much you liked the brand. I was like, Oh man, this is really cool. And so what I did was I just, I sent you an email and pretty much said, Hey, I love your products. I love what you do. I see that you love um, this company that I work with. Um, and I've had a lot of success with them and I would love to see how I can help you and your company grow. And so, yeah, it was extremely organic. You know, just, it just so happened. I'd already followed your accounts for a while. I saw that you love other businesses that we've grown. It just, it seemed like a perfect fit. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, when you first reached out, I'd had a few people reach out and not in a, not making that personal kind of connection, but I had a few other people reach out and say, Hey, I can help you with ads. I can help you grow your audience and that kind of stuff. But there was something about that, right, that you had actually taken the time to, I mean, you were legitimate, right? And I think this is going to tie right. into a lot of our discussion. I want you guys to understand who are listening to this that um, connections, real authentic connections still matter. And you guys know this. If you're buying stuff online. You know how this works. If you're, if you're following Wolf and Iron, you want it to be authentic. If you're following what, whoever else it is, you want it to be authentic. Authentic connections still matter. And so I don't want you guys 100%. to hear this podcast and think, oh, well, all it is is just uh, it's just algorithms and people behind the scenes and they're just you know doing doing whatever. So for the guys that are that are not clued into maybe what you do, uh, Raymond, give us give us just kind of your idea of, of what it is that your company does, what you guys are good at. Sure. So I run an advertising agency called Social Hacker, and I refer to us as a growth agency. And what that means is is everything we do is 100% tied back to sales or if you're service-based business, back to leads. And so what we do is we primarily focus on advertising and building sales funnels. So we use Facebook, Instagram, Google, Google Shopping. And then when we need to, we also help with people's websites and just the whole process of getting people who have no idea who you are to come find out more about what you do to sell them on your business, your product or your service, and then have them become a customer and to get them to buy back from you repeatedly. And so we, we focus on growth. And um, I remember years ago through a past business I used to work with that they used to pay, you know, a really big uh, million dollar agency, tons of money every single year. And at the end of the campaigns or quarter or whatever, they would, we would all sit down, they'd show a report, and the business owner would always ask, okay, how much business did I get for what I paid for? And the agency said, well, they make an excuse of, oh, we couldn't track it or something wasn't tracking or, or oh, but we got a lot of clicks and we reached a lot of people. And I remember just how awkward those conversations were. And I told myself, if I ever start an agency, everything I do, how a business is going to judge me and my team of how successful we were, 100% it's only going to be based on sales. And that's it. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And it's that's really been helpful for us. It's it's alleviated a, alleviated a lot of our fears actually because when we first began working with you, you know, the thought was, you know, how much are we going to be paying these guys and how do we know how that's actually going to impact how do we know like what they're doing is actually bringing in sales and and that kind of stuff. And one of the things that you've done really really well is you've given us the ability to kind of throttle our sales, which is really important for us because we do so many on the rustic and main side, we do handmade things. And so we can't accept, you know, like all the orders in the world at once. Like a lot of companies would love to just grow, you know, to scale to any size. We can't do that. We have to kind of grow at a certain pace. And so being able to throttle that has been really helpful for us. And you guys have done a great job with that. And also just being able to co- to correlate the things that you guys are doing in, in the marketing end to the sales that we're getting uh, on, on the rustic and main side. And so we can just kind of see that ratio and we just, we just really feel very confident with, with your guys approach to that. You, you did mention a couple of things though, that I think a lot of guys are interested in. Um, we're going to talk about funnels in just a second, but give us an, un- an understanding, just kind of a high level of how does it actually work? I mean, people, what you just said sounds awesome. Like, Oh gosh, you know, that's yeah. Getting more leads, getting more sales, getting the things that you're doing, your product, what have you out there in front of the people that need to see it or, or care about it. How does that actually work? Let's just use Facebook as an example because it's kind of the behemoth these days. Sure. So, man, that conversation, we could probably spend 100 hours talking about and still not touch on everything. Sure. But simply, so it kind of goes down to, one, are you the person that has money to invest or you don't? Number one, if you have money to invest, the best way to do it is to use their advertising platform. And so that goes across both Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And even though all the, uh, the the hearings that Mark Zuckerberg has been having, you know, this past week, there's 2 billion people using the platform. So I guarantee it, the people you want to buy your product, your service are using the platform. Yep. So the advertising platform is 100% the best way to reach your audience. And they have, you can target pretty much anything you can think of. So imagine every, all the settings on your personal profile. So what you like, what you dislike, you know, um, what your relationship status is, how old you are, your age, your gender, where you live. Those are all features that you can target. And so you can imagine if you're a local business, you can drill down to the exact right people in your demogra- in your geography mm-hmm. to get, buy your product. So if you have a restaurant, you know, a pizza place, you can target teenagers between the age of, you know, 17 and even college age students to get them to come and get a piece of pizza. Right. And then, if, and then, so you have the advertising platform and you can, there's thousands upon thousands of interests and demographics you can choose from. And even, um, you know, down to how much, how many people Facebook things are in your household. But then for the people who don't have the money to invest, and this is really important. This is where a lot of people get it wrong is they think, oh, I don't have money to invest. But the thing is, is that there's so many free ways that you can get people aware of your product, or your service, that you don't need money to invest at first to grow and to really scale. You do, but just to get to test your your business to see that someone's willing to buy it or, or just to, if you don't have money, just to take advantage of those free methods, it, it costs no money to you. It's just time. And so for instance, let me give you an example. So, um, you know, there's a local friend here where I live and he has a full-time job, but he likes to redo furniture. And so what he does is you have, you've heard of Facebook marketplace, right? Yeah. And so probably three or four times a week, he posts on Facebook marketplace, these new pieces that he's refurbished. And then also every city now in every town, they have local Facebook groups to buy and sell and trade. You know, a lot of them have tens of thousands of people in it. Yep. And, and he posts in that Facebook group too. And this guy, he makes $1,500 to $2,000 a month extra as a side hobby, just taking advantage of free awareness. If anyone can post on it, anyone, no one has to pay. And it's just, it's free awareness. And it's a perfect way for you to, find out, okay, one, if I'm starting a new business, are people willing to buy it? Because you can test out the waters and if they are, great, take the next step. Or if you say you're a business and things are really tight, it's the perfect way just to get 20,000 more people to know about your business for free. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And uh, that's a really good overview and and a great way to do that for free as well. Um, you know, with all the Zuckerberg kind of hearing stuff going on and, and things that are happening with Facebook and the news, 
I know there's the guys that are listening to this podcast that are going, you know, they got their, uh, they got their aluminum foil hat on and, you know, they, they don't have their information yeah. out there, you know, and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's those guys. And I totally get that. Uh, my wife is actually, she's actually in that camp, right? So anytime Zuckerberg's on the, uh, on the news, she's like, I told you, but, uh, <laughs> and she's probably right about a lot of these things, but I'll tell you guys what, I really enjoy not being bombarded with like cat food advertisements because I don't have cats. Exactly. You know, I like, I like seeing the things that I actually care about. Like I'll get, I'm into manly stuff. So I get advertisements about like knives and uh, the other things that are probably similar to Wolf and Iron, uh, but not as good. And, uh, and then I, you know, but I see things that I actually care about and that's much more enjoyable than just sitting, th- scrolling through and just seeing a bunch of random ads that are just trying to hit me up with stuff that I that absolutely don't matter to me. So it's it's fantastic from a I think a user's perspective, a consumer's perspective, but it's also great for businesses. And you know, from our perspective on the rustic and main side, not to give away our secrets, but as you guys can imagine, yeah. being able to target people and say, "Hey, you've got a you, you've just got engaged. Hey, by the way, we have these cool rings. Check them out." That's that's tremendous. And uh, and guys, and you can get very very um, guys like yourself, Raymond. I mean, your and your team get very very good at figuring out you know, how to, how to target people with interest, but also Facebook has some things built in that allows the Facebook kind of behind the scenes algorithm to kind of know who's really responding, even the the things that you may not have thought of. Right. So there's, there's, it's just a great platform to advertise on. And, uh, and I think we're in a really great space to, to reach people that you would have never thought of reaching before. And just, you know, I, I know a number of makers around the Charlotte area that they do fantastic work and I, I think they stay pretty busy. Um, but they, they go to a lot of shows, you know, they make a lot of local appearances and they do some kind of more, I would, it's great to get out in the public, great to meet people, but I still consider that kind of old school kind of way of doing things. And, you know, in the time, if I could take just, you know, $200 or maybe $300 or whatever, I think I would invest in time at being at a show. If I could turn around and spend that on really focused advertisements, I guarantee you that, uh, I could get and you would, I'm sure you would agree with this. We could get people to, you know, uh, we can get more information and certainly more leads, maybe even more sales than we'd probably get at a, at a local show. Probably depends on the market a little bit on the product, but um, I still think it's just a fantastic way to conduct business. And um, it's been really well, done really well for us. Yeah, it is. And just to kind of touch on that is if I can encourage your audience, who are thinking about doing this, maybe they're in the middle of testing the advertising waters, if you will, is the only people who don't make it are the people who quit. And what I mean by that is it's true. You, you can, your first $100, $200, $50, $10 even, uh, come out of the gate, just have the perfect uh, creative and the, target the perfect audience, and you can win, win big. It's, you can do that. But what happens is that sometimes someone will spend hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and they won't get the results they want right away, and they quit. Yeah. And the problem with that is, and you touched on it a, f- a few times, is Facebook. They're so good at understanding what is relevant to you, so they know you like manly things. And if I was a, a manly brand and I was selling something manly, is it takes time for them to understand who's going to want your product and who's most interested in it. And so the people who quit too early is that those, those are the people who they probably would have made it if they would have stuck to their guns. And I know don't go into debt to do it, sure. but just keep going day in, day out, put what budget you can aside to do it in your win a case in point. So we have a brand that for the first two months, things were not going well. You know, we were losing money or barely breaking even, but it took time to understand who was most interested in, uh, who would be willing to look at their product, buy their product. And so we needed that time to understand. And so does Facebook because they use artificial intelligence to learn, right? It's like a person. It, it, it starts to learn, you know, how people react to your brand, your website, what you're offering. And then eventually when it starts to understand, it'll better target the people who are willing to pay for it. And, but that same brand I told you about, the first few months were not going well. Now, fast forward five or six months, you know, things are going extremely well. They've, they've had to move into another warehouse. You know, they're hiring employees, you know, every single month because they can't keep up with the, the sales volume. Yeah. So I tell this, I have this conversation probably once a week and it's don't give up, just keep testing, keep learning. And eventually it will work. Yep. 
Yeah, that's good. And, you know, that really touches on something, too, that's key and common in every business, and that is when we begin our businesses, we have an assumption about who our customers are, who's going to buy from us, how much they're probably going to buy, how popular our whatever widget product service is going to be. And a lot of times those assumptions are wrong. And it does take market testing to figure out what is it that people actually want. And the great thing about the ads is that you can relatively inexpensively uh, and, and in a very short time frame, I mean, you're talking about two months to figure that out. That's incredible mm -hmm. from a business standpoint, because some businesses will, you know, have spent in the past, right? Tens of thousands, hundred thousand dollars and years before they finally nail down what it is that they're trying to sell to their customers and what their customers want, who their customers are and those kinds of things. And so still the ability to do that in such a short time frame is just a ridiculously incredible uh, not only opportunity for business owners, but just an incredible turnaround. And, uh, and so, you know, we want things quick. We want things immediate. We expect stuff that's, especially when it's on the internet to just work, you know, you just plug in your stuff and all of a sudden sales are supposed to happen. Well, it doesn't always work that way. And historically for businesses, it's always been a challenge to overcome your assumptions and to really get down to the nitty gritty and know what your customers actually want, what they're really going to buy, what they're really interested in. And, uh, and so it's, it's, ads are a great way to do that. And, and getting that data so quickly. Um, it's just, it's, it's unprecedented. It's, it's like nothing never before. Um, I want to jump into funnels real quick because these are huge. And this is a concept that is happening all around us. I think people are probably experiencing this. Um, if you're part of the Wolf and Iron, you're, you've experienced some funneling, just so you guys know. Uh, but give us an idea of what a funnel is, how it works, and maybe even how that's applied in the ad space. Sure. So I'm sure everyone has heard of the, the idea of knock on a hundred doors if you're a door to door salesman and eventually you'll get at least two to buy. Right. So that's just that's just a very traditional um, salesman ratio. And then of the two who buy, really, you, you probably had 10 good conversations with people inside the house, right? If you used to the, the Kirby vacuum salesman example. Right. And so that's just a really simple scenario that's tried and true. And so funneling, essentially, it's just the method of how you get people's attention, how you can get them down to your website, how, and then how you can get them to buy from you and then buy again. And so pretty much is this is where a lot of people go wrong. This, I'm happy you brought this up, is they think they can just – uh, put an ad in front of someone, or they can, um, you know, whether that's a TV commercial, whatever. And if no one buys, well, then, oh, my product doesn't work, or this advertising space doesn't work, or whatever. No, it's it's all about nurturing and building a relationship. That's kind of why, I, even on our scenario, Mike, is our funnel was I had followed you for quite a while. Yeah. We started communicating. It took I me, mean, and it was a communication that happened probably over what, a month and a half yeah. uh, before we decided to work together. And so that whole funnel is just your process of how you begin to nurture that potential customer to get them to buy. And this is where the more and more you have uh, these. Uh, people online who are just going for clickbaiting and to get you to buy, and they'll say, you know, free, just pay shipping kind of models, which there's nothing wrong against that. You can make good money off of that. But the people who are going to make are the people who just really care about their customers and make a phenomenal experience. And that's like with you guys, you know, you guys care about the details of Rustic and Main and how your packaging and how you communicate. And when someone emails you with a rush shipping, you guys are quick to respond and you bend over backwards for it. So it's all about the details. And that is where you're going to have the most success. Now, to go back to the funneling aspect is you really want to think about each stage of whether that's a, a local business or an online business, to each stage of a person has no idea who I am. Okay, how do I get them to be interested? How do I um, uh, pinpoint what their needs are, their wants are? How do I convince them that you know this is quite quality, that this is exactly what they want? And then what's the experience of bringing them on board, selling them? And then also, how do I keep them from having the uh, – the, the purchase regret, right? And yeah. to get them to want to buy again. And so there's a lot you have to think about. And that's really what separates separates people who are really, really good at not only just advertising, but also just really growing their business because they really understand how do I get customers and then how do I make them raving fans? Yeah. No, it's really good. 
Uh, to kind of give you guys an idea of how that works from the Wolf and Iron standpoint, uh, and I'm not really, we're not doing a lot of ads really at all with Wolf and Iron at this point. Wolf and Iron has, has not had a lot of organic growth, so I've had to target some guys with with ads, and that's where we've seen a lot of our growth. It's actually, it's actually been really good, even though the ads haven't been, haven't had big ad spin, and we haven't, you know, this has just been a long time over a few years uh, that Wolf and Iron has been growing, but part of the the benefit to to targeting guys rather than just having just some explosive, you know, uh, organic growth is that I know who's coming in the door. I know who I'm, who I'm kind of reaching my audience, you know, these are my guys. And so if you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance that, you know, you saw an advertisement or something like that. And, uh, and you came across it. Well, it wasn't an accidental. You have some things, you and I have some things in common. And so part of the funnel is, Hey, here's Wolf and Iron. Here's a podcast or here's the, the Wolf and Iron Facebook page. Um, or here's a quote or something like that, uh, you know, quote, uh, meme or poster or whatever you want to call it. And it's just kind of introducing you guys to Wolf and Iron saying, Hey, this is generally what we're doing. Do you have a general interest? If you do follow, listen, maybe subscribe to the podcast, that kind of stuff. And that's sort of at the top of the funnel. And as you get down a little bit further in the funnel, now we're, it's, Hey, we've got this Facebook group. And I've told you guys about that a few times on the podcast. It's, we're having great conversations over there. I'm not trying to, this is not a snake oil type of thing. Uh, these guys love uh, pursuing what it means to be a man and the, the guys over there are very high caliber. And so that's the next stage of that funnel. The The final kind of stage or one of the final stages of the funnel will eventually be a membership site that we're going to launch down the road. But, you know, I, some guys think about funnels in terms of just sales, like, okay, uh, I've got my leads and then I've got my potential sales and then I've got the people who are actually going to buy and then that's it. I think about a funnel in terms of value. Okay. Like at the very broadest sense, you're going to get some value. Uh, when you get further down in that funnel, you're going to get more value. You're going to get more things that impact you. Um, if, and then at the you know the final base of that funnel, where you're part of the membership site, once that launches, uh, you're going to get a lots of value, ridiculous amounts of value. And I almost think about it as as shields, right? Locking shields with your brothers. You've got these guys that you're, they're just kind of spread out, right? And then you're kind of coming in and you're locking shields and you're locking shields and getting tighter and tighter. And as you do that, you become more and more focused on the things that are going to really serve you and benefit you as a man. And so the funneling, you know, we can think about this, and certainly people do this in a very selfish way of, I just want to make money. How can I sell my product or my idea or my courses or whatever case and just make money? And that gives, well, it gives kind of everything a bad name, social media a bad name. But there are ways to do this, guys, and especially if you have a business with integrity, and I hope you do, there are ways to do this where you're thinking, how can I add more and more value the closer and closer people get to purchasing from me or the service or whatever the case is. And that's really what we try to do here with Wolf and Iron. We try to do the same thing with Rustic and Maine. And so, uh, you know, think about funneling not only as, hey, how can I get these guys closer to buying something from me, but also as in, how can I continue to add more and more value as they get closer and closer into the things that I'm, that I'm really about and that I'm really excited about sharing with them. So good stuff. <coughs> Uh, I think you brought up a good point go real quick, Mike. I want to touch yeah. on that is um, can a lot of people you have to say 20% of people that are impulse buyers, right? They'll, they'll buy right away within the first day and you'll get them. But then you have a large chunk of audience that they're interested, but they're not convinced. And just to re bring up your point is a lot of people are kind of, they sit back and they watch, they watch to see, are you consistent? Do you consistently bring value? And really it's those people that are more than likely going to be the raving fans because they're more careful and it's your consistently of being, uh, having integrity, bringing them value and being consistent with producing that content and having their best interest in mind is going to be where you're going to get the other probably 60 to 80% of your business because they know that they're interested, but they're really waiting to see, is this the real deal? Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and, and obviously with uh, what I'm doing with Wolf and Iron especially, there is very much that honor and integrity kind of built in there. And so I want to, uh, the whole brand is based around being legitimate, authentic, right? If at any point I'm not living up to my own, uh, you know, I'm not living up to my own standards as to what it means to be a man, then I'm beginning to, uh, to damage the brand, but also my mission. So uh, that's great. Great point. I want to talk about um, some of the guys that, that have these sort of hangups, these overcoming the, the kind of the hardships of the mindsets that they're kind of stuck in for entrepreneurs. You mentioned this 
before we begin the, the podcast conversation, touch on that because I think that was that's going to be key for for guys because we are there is some cha- there are some challenges here because we're moving into some things that are relatively unknown things that, that people aren't familiar with. And as an entrepreneur, obviously, there's those that just love to go out and take risk, and we will spend money, and we don't care. You know, we 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 absolutely believe in ourselves 100. percent And uh, and it's not until we've just you know gone into amazing debt and lost everything that we that we stop. I'm not one of those guys, by the way. But there are those oh. out there like that, and then there are those who are more cautious. They're more risk averse. But what are the kind of the, the challenges and the, the kind of hangups, the hardships that the entrepreneurs have that you that you'd want to speak to? Yeah. And it's funny. Every man really is different. It's true. You have some men that uh, they just don't let things get to them and they just keep trudging ahead. And they're the ideal man. I wish I was more like that. But it's funny, before I started my business, I watched a lot of my friends who were entrepreneurial. I, I mapped out this this trend that I see all entrepreneurs make, not all, but a lot of the ones I was close to, is they, they leave, they start their business and they have this really big emotional high. and Everything's great and they're on fire. And then the reality of, oh man, this is going to take a lot longer and I have to work a lot harder than I expected and things get really, really tough. And then they hit this bottom, this big state of uncertainty, depression, anxiety, whatever. And then if they, if they keep going and they keep battling through it, then they start to come out of it. Yeah. And yeah. even though I saw that and I was mentally prepared for it, but it was still very different for me. And this is where I think as a man, you really need to understand what grounds you and, and this is where I love the last podcast that you had was uh, a couple of weeks ago with Ken Coleman is finding your calling. If you know your calling, then you, you'll be able to keep pushing through because you know this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And But if you think that this is, I think this is my calling, I haven't tested yet, but I'm going to keep going. This is where for me, you really need to understand what grounds you. And so every man is different. So for me, as long as I know that me and God are okay, me and my wife are okay, and uh, those two things are in place, I'm going to be okay. But even going beyond that is I want to encourage all men that you're going to reach low states, whether that's depression, anxiety. And I had massive amounts of depression, anxiety in the first year of business because, you know, money's tight, mm. things are going well, yeah. and you're, you're un, there's a lot of uncertainty. But what really helped me, even in this probably the past five months, is and this is where I was encouraged and for a while. I didn't believe in this whole mindset routine and, and things like that. I thought, Oh, that's just this frou frou stuff, right? You know, I'm a man. I don't need that kind of stuff, sure. but it's, it's fundamentally changed me and my business. And so, and really it's just because whether, you know, you could say that um, I'm a double minded man. Sometimes I forget is so every morning I have this routine for me. I do five things every single morning. The first thing I do is I'm a Christian man is I pray. The second thing I do is I say five things I'm thankful for because those things you're thankful for, it makes all of the things that are going really bad in your business or not going well or, or fires you have to put out in your business seem small, right? Because you're like, oh, you know, it, uh, everything's going to be okay. Everything's still going well for me. And then the third thing I do is I write out five wins or things that made me fulfilled the day before. And I write them out. What what was a win in my business or what made me feel personally fulfilled to do? Okay. And again, that is just to remind me what's important to me and to remind me to always being optimistic. Okay. And then the four, the, the fourth thing that I do is I read my goals for the year because I forget when you're in the middle of your business and your and your things are going wrong, whatever, and sometimes you forget what you're trying to accomplish in that year or five years. And so for me, I remember over the past several years, I would forget. And then three or six months would go by and I'd, I'd find my goal sheet again. And then what would happen? I'm like, oh man, I haven't been working on this. <laughs> and so every morning I read my goals. And then this is where um, I really didn't believe it, but I, I, I close my eyes and I imagine what it's going to look and what it's going to feel like when I accomplish those goals. Because for me, sometimes motivation is very fleeting, right? Sometimes you just aren't motivated. Let's just yeah. be honest. And so sometimes it helps to remind me what that motivation is. And, and that's what I do. And that's been fundamentally, has fundamentally changed me, my business. It's probably been the happiest I've been in the last five months. And I've been probably in years of my life, even before I started my business. And so I I said all that because I want to remind men that it's not going to be easy, but you need to understand what grounds you. 
And you need to make sure you're always doing those things that ground you, because even when things are going well, you need to remind yourself what is going well, what you are thankful for, and what where you're where where you're headed and what you're going to accomplish. Because I love it. I, I've I watched a lot of entrepreneurs that I've, I've been friends with, and I've talked to a lot of them, and more so than being creative and being the smartest guy in the room, it, it's all about being persistent and it's all about being consistent and sometimes it's being too stubborn to stop <laughs> yep. what i call it yep. and because you will accomplish it because if, if you're going for it you'll learn you'll adapt because no one wants to fail so you're going to adapt to be, to win yep. but more than anything it's about just holding to your gun pushing through it and not stopping for anything and so if there's anything that i can help anyone in your audience understand is that in today's world, you literally, you can make a good living, probably a better living than it was working at your other job. But I know that is for me. I hope that is for you too, Mike. Yep. And is you can make a better living doing exactly what you want to do, exactly what you love. You can get there, but the first couple of years are really tough. Yeah. But you'll make it if you just stick to your guns. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. That, my friend, is an excellent morning routine. I mean, that is just fantastic. I love the gratitude there. I love starting out the day with prayer and gratitude is so powerful and just saying, you know, here are the things that I've got going on that I'm thankful for. We all wake up thinking, ah, oh, crap, you know, here's the mess I got to deal with today or what if this happens, right? But having that gratitude session is just so important because we all, I mean, we do. I mean, gosh, I mean, especially if you're here in America or wherever you're listening, if you're able to listen to a podcast, <laughs> you're doing better than a lot of people are doing. And you know, that's so important. It's absolutely key. So just fantastic, guys. I hope you're taking notes on that. Go back and listen to those five steps because you're going to want to emulate that or adopt some of those things into your morning routine because, that, yeah, it absolutely does. Mindset is so important. Um, I'm a naturally optimistic person, and so I don't do a whole lot of uh, gratitude stuff. I just kind of, I don't know, I just sort of gaily skip through the day. I don't know if <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but I just kind of assume yeah, things are going to work out. Things are going to be all right. And that helps me a lot, and, uh, and I can't believe I said gaily skip through the day. This is what came to my mind. <laughs> but I, I do. I mean, I just I assume things are going to be okay, and I've, I've kind of thought things through, and things are going to work out. Um, I know a lot, a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people that are friends of mine, especially men, are not like that, and uh, just people in general. We're all different. We're all wired up a little bit differently. But I love uh, even still having moments where I'm just, especially when I'm going to bed at night, I just think about all the blessings that I have and the things that... That I'm just that I'm gifted with, blessed with, uh, blessed to have friends that I have, um, and this is even before I started businesses and all that kind of stuff, guys. It's just uh, gratitude goes a long way to just making you uh, a happier individual and a, a nicer person to be around. Also, it takes that stress off, you know, uh, as well. So it puts you in the right mindset and uh, and makes you understand that man, if you've got this many blessings, you can probably tackle on one more. And so just stick it through, power through with your business problems. And uh, and learn from them. So really, really good stuff. You got me pumped up, man. That's good. Good. And yeah, everybody's different. And I'm not the first person to come up with a routine like that. I just adapted it. I adapted it to myself where I knew were weak areas. And that's where you really have to understand you as a as a man. Where like you have to be honest with yourself. Am I pessimistic or optimistic? And I'm a believer. I believe you can reprogram your body and reprogram your mindset and even your mentality or, and everything like that. I believe you can reprogram. It takes building habits. And it's been so powerful for me. I want to tell everyone. And that's just where like, we have one life. And why be pessimistic when you can be optimistic and be happy and be thankful? And life is all about budgeting. I'm a huge budger to my business, my personal life. Yeah. It's all about budgeting. And so if, if budgeting your money to have what you want and to build the wealth you want, budging your time so that you don't regret anything. And that's where I, I forget things so easily. I love my wife. She's amazing, but she understands that. She understands that sometimes when I'm in the zone, you know, I don't hear anything else and I don't mean anything by it. It's just, I'm a one, one thing at a time kind of guy. Yeah. And so having that daily reminder lets you look back and just remember what's really important to me and my family. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Really good advice. Kind of getting back a little bit to the the social media stuff here. Um, what do you what do you see out there that's working? I mean that that people are doing the tactics, the techniques, and things like that that maybe people should adopt that are that's that's being successful 
out there. Cause they, you know, we, we all are part of social media. We see Facebook ads, we see stuff coming through on Instagram and there's all kinds of stuff. There's text stuff. There's crazy, insane ads. There's the, um, you won't believe this one thing that cures diabetes, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Right. But then there's, there's, uh, there's other things. What do you see out there that's working? Sure. Above everything else is being authentic and authentic. Doesn't mean you spend $10,000 on photo shoots and video shoots and to make this high quality piece of content, yeah. it means you make something extremely genuine. Probably some of the most successful campaigns we run for businesses is when we do, we have customers of theirs do reviews of the products or the service that they have. And then we use those and we use those ads or when, or something as simple as doing unboxing and unpackaging videos of a product because it's authentic. It's, it's from the person's point of view. We have, we have them talk through what they like about the product or the service, you know, why they chose it. And it's so authentic that you as a consumer, when you see that your immediate thought isn't, okay, yeah, whatever, they just want my money. Or it's not, um, okay, they're just trying to get me, convince me to buy this product. It's from someone else's opinion, point of view. And so it says a lot more than you as a business spending ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on this high budget advertising. It still works, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, this is where we talked about at the beginning, is you have to remember people are still people. So if you treat them like people and you, and you care about them, you nurture them and you deal with them honestly and authentically, you're going to attract the people who want your product or your service. And the people who aren't attracted to it are going to go somewhere else. But at the end of the day, the more authentic you are, that works better than anything else. Yeah, that's great. Great point. And you guys remember it's social media, not sales media, you know, right? I mean, it's, we've all seen the commercials where it's like, it's a Chevy ad and people are just raving about their new Chevy. And then at the little bottom, there's the text that says paid actors, not real Chevy owners or something like that, right? I'm just picking on Chevy here, but whatever it is, we've all seen those commercials and we just, at first we get kind of sucked in like, okay, this person genuinely likes what, oh, nope, nope. They're just an actor, you know, and we, we're all familiar with that. And so the ability to have your regular Joe, uh, be able to reach thousands and thousands of people or even hundreds of people, whatever it is, but to reach people and say, Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm just a genuine person. Here's how I genuinely feel about whatever and be, be authentic. That's really where we should be headed. And uh, that's really what people are craving. And so I think that's a great call out. I think that's really great authenticity and not faked authenticity like those, you know, those terrible commercials, but the real deal, just be yourself. And, uh, you know, I'm really thankful for things like YouTube, which is just, you know, growing up, we had, all these, anytime we saw someone on TV, uh, it was always like professional speakers, professional actors, people who had this as their professional job. They had their hair done, they had makeup on, and all that kind of stuff. And then YouTube comes out, and it's just like, you know, you're just anybody. Anybody's talking about anything. And if they have, uh, if they're an expert on it, or if they have some authority in the subject, or if they're just interesting to look at or watch, you watch it. And it's really just taken off, uh, it's just taken the, the, the pressure off of, other people who really just have a message to get out there or a product they want to get out there. It's really just taking the pressure off of us to just be ourselves and know that there's somebody out there who this message is meant for and they're going to connect. And that's really what it's all about being right. authentic. So, yeah. And, and to go with that is video is the one of the best ways you can be authentic because whether that's in the moment, it's you speaking in front of a camera, it's picking up on your personalities, your body language, but so beyond just that it's more authentic than any other type of content is that specifically with Facebook and Instagram is that Facebook pushes so much preference for video because they know it's more authentic and they know people engage with it more yeah. that they reserve priority up to 70% of the newsfeed for video wow. because they understand yeah. it's more authentic and it's more engaging. So for anyone who's listening, if you're starting a business, you're going to run a business or you do run a business do more video. Yeah. Yeah. Good call out. Excellent. So I, I know some guys are listening to this and they're thinking, okay, this is great, Mike. This is great, great Raymond. We, you know, great advice here, but I don't know if my business is, is going to be a hit. Like I have no idea if my thing is, is something that people are really going to want to buy. Um, obviously we've talked about, you know, having some ads and getting some interest and stuff like that. But Raymond, I know also that you guys are picky about who you work with. Um, and there's, there's probably reasons for that, but is there a way that you can, I mean, is there anything that you can tell? Is it just kind of gut level where you go, 
this business has something that I'm actually interested in, uh, or there's something that I think actually would do well in the market. I mean, is there a way to tell like the business has the thing that's going to be successful, or is it just kind of really up to your preference, gut feel? How's that go for you guys? Sure. So first thing we look at is, are people currently selling that product now or that service? So, you know, with Rustic in Maine, with your guys' custom rings, yes, people buy wedding rings. It happens. It's yeah. going to happen probably until the end of time. And so we know that people buy those products. So we already know that it has the potential to sell. Now, what we look for is, is there anything that's unique about it? Because, you know, yeah, while there's a case and all these other jewelry at every single mall in America, sure. what's going to make you unique? And so using Rustic and Main as an example, what made us, obviously, because I already knew about you guys because I followed you for a while, was that, yes, you sell a product that people buy every single day. But what was unique about you and a business should think about is everything you do, it's all about the story behind the ring and the story behind the material. And so for you as a business, it's what is unique about you. So what the first thing we look at is we look at are people currently buying or selling that service? Mm -hmm. If they're not, if it's something completely brand new, then that means you need to do some testing to see if people are willing to buy it. And we talked about that earlier. You can pay or you can do free channels. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly is, is, it, is there something unique about that product or that service that is done a little differently than anyone else? Or is there such a deeper meaning and story and emotional feeling behind that product or service that gives you a competitive advantage that we can use and tell better stories because people love storytelling, right? And so if you can tell a really good story, people emotionally gravitate to stories they relate to. And so if you have a really cool backstory and each product or service has a really cool story, that just tells us that, okay, you have a good product, a great, great story that we can sell. And then from there, it's just a matter of the, does the math make sense for where you want to grow your business to? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, and I think having that connection, guys, I mean, is so key to your product. Don't just put something out there and say, here's my widget. Everybody go buy it. Have that connection. I was thinking today actually about something I would have never come up with as a uh, black rifle coffee, right? Super, super uh -huh. successful, does really great in the, uh, in the bang bang community, right? It's, it's, you know, everybody likes to shoot, loves black rifle coffee and, and, and that kind of stuff. But of course, you know, it's not something I would have come up with because the old man inside of me is like, it's just coffee, you dumbass, you know, just drink it. You know? and, <laughs> exactly. and I would have never thought like, oh, make coffee centered around this idea of, you know, shooting and America and freedom and all this other kind of stuff. But guys connect with that. And it's a, it's, a, it's just, I don't know why the old guy inside of me is New York, but uh, from New York, but it's how it comes across. But it's, it's just, you know, there's somebody out there who has that idea of like, oh, I can take this to the next level, right? I mean, how many people out there sell coffee? It's ridiculous. And how many brands out there? But it's about making that connection that people, people see it and they go, okay, uh, it's not just coffee. It's more than that for me, right? Um, I don't drink Black Rifle coffee, but if you guys do, that's great. I don't even know if it's good. But the, the point is, is that people are making that connection to what is being sold. It means more than the product itself. And I think that really is, you've made a great point. Uh, it's, it's about making that connection and, uh, and being able to tell the story and get people to kind of connect with that so that they, they feel that they're part of something, not that they're just buying something. And so that's really going to help you stand out, especially if you're, if you're in a market where you're trying to compete with some existing kind of behemoths out there. Maybe you're trying to sell, I don't know, whatever it is, coffee even, uh, whatever it is, what it's going to, what's going to cause you to stand stand apart. And so I think that's a great call out. Well, you know, we're wrapping things. That's what I, no, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I say that's real quick. That's one thing that I love about the day we live in is that people don't buy products anymore just because the product is there. Like before the internet, they buy things they relate to. And that's why whatever you offer your product or your service that someone's going to relate to it if you make it relatable, if you make it just really static and, you know, really bland, well then no one's going to probably going to want to buy it because they can't relate to it. That's why like Rifle Coffee Company, all those veterans and pro-American patriots, things like that, they, they relate to it and they buy it because they believe in that. And so the more you can make it relatable, there's always a niche somewhere of people who are going to buy it and relate to it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, so wrapping things up here, I got one more question for you. Um, you, you have a really unique opportunity to help people grow their dreams. I mean, you really do. I mean, you've helped us tremendously 
And I can just imagine what that must be like. Obviously, there's this, the normal kind of stressors that come along with having a business. But how does it impact you as a man to do what you do, to know that you're helping other people grow their businesses, which means giving other people jobs? It's not just about selling stuff, but I mean, Rustic and Maine, for example, and we hire, we've got about eight people who work for us now. We're going to be bringing on another three or four in the next month, month and a half or so. And, uh, and so, you know, you're making, you're helping other people build their businesses, which is causing other impact on other people's lives. How does that make you feel at the end of the day? What are, what are your thoughts on that as a man? Uh, just as you, as you kind of lay down at night or as you think, think upon what it is that you do? Wow. That's a really good question. And a lot of people don't ask me that question and I wish they would more often because they're just like, Oh, your business is profitable, but it goes so much deeper than that. And that's another reason why we're so picky because I, when I first started, I was a freelancer and I worked with some brands at first that I was embarrassed to tell people I worked with. And so ever since then, I told myself, I'm only going to work with people who I myself, I believe in them, their business, and that they make the world a better place because I want to be, I want to feel fulfilled when they're growing because they're making the world a better place. And that's why as a man, everything you do, I mean, like I said, life is short, everything you do. So make sure it, it, it's something that is bettering other people's lives. And for me, I, you know, I wish I was the kind of person that you know, I was an author or a creative or a musician, you know, and whatever I did reached millions of people. But what I am good at is growing people's businesses. And so that's why we're so picky and we pick businesses that we can just completely rally behind, shout at the mountaintops how great this company is because we believe in it so much. And so at the end of the day, it's a great feeling to not only know that you're growing their business, but that they're also touching all these other people and all these other, you know, workers and customers. And it's a good feeling. And honestly, to be honest with you, in my daily um, uh, mindset routine, it happens very often where as a, a fulfillment, I put down even Rustic and Maine or one of our other clients, how well they're doing. Because yeah. it's one of the first times in my life where I'm like, you know what? I am a part of something and I'm doing something that is helping other people and it's making the world a better place. And so as a man, it's really one of the things that helps me be fulfilled. And for the longest time, I, didn't, I was unsure if I was going to be fulfilled doing this until I made that change to just partner with businesses who I can be fulfilled through by growing them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you're definitely making an impact for, for us. And and uh, we love having you as part of our, our team. And, uh, you know, guys who are listening to that, you listen to Raymond's response there, and you're thinking, man, I want that. I want some of that. I want to feel that way. I want to feel useful, fulfilled, purposeful, significant. You know, I believe you guys can have that. It's part of the high call. And I think you can experience that in your families. I think you can experience that in your career, in your business, uh, in, your, in your entrepreneurship. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities to do that, guys, but you've got to take action. You've got to get serious about it. And... Um, and, and listen to the podcast is a great, great way to start. Um, head over to the Wolf and Iron community, obviously, wolfandiron.com forward slash the group. If you want to begin having some conversations with guys over there about these kinds of things and, uh, and continue getting inspired. Raymond's over there. I'm over there. And uh, Raymond, how, how can guys get in touch with you? People who are listening to this are thinking, man, I, I need to find out a little bit more about Social Hacker. What's a great way to get in touch with you guys? Sure. So about the agency, you can go to socialhacker.co. Okay. You can reach out to me on Instagram at uh, the at RGA Johnston. And then for the guys in the community, just tag me in a comment. If you want to chat, you know, I think it'd be good. Even if you guys have a bunch of comments, just let's start a chat in the community and I'll do my best to respond and comment on those. And yeah, those are probably the three best ways to contact me. Excellent. All right, my friends. So thank you so much for being on here again. Great conversation. I know the guys are going to get a lot out of this. And so I look forward to talking to you next time. Great. Thanks, Mike. Love being here. Well, there you have it, men. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. Feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media networks. And look, if you got something out of this, make sure another guy does too. Share the episode and make sure it gets in front of the guys that need to hear it the most. Until next time, keep your powder dry. And may a fair wind be always in your sails.